Good morning. It is written in the word of the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Join me this morning and let us praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Amen.
let us stand for those who can for the reading of God's word. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water.
Do you believe it? Jesus changed everything. We come this day in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ to give honor to our God, to give honor that we may worship truth in spirit, that we can say hallelujah to thy name that gave us that first breath this morning to say thank you that you woke us up this morning that you kept us safe our families safe that we can say glory to thy name this day you gave to us a son a wonderful son, a non-returnable gift, which his name is Jesus. But you just didn't stop there. You saw it to us to leave with us the Holy Spirit to call to remembrance all that Jesus has said. We honor you this day that you can come into our minds and in our hearts that we may get it right this day for that which you have blessed us with. We struggle through all our lives to do those things that's pleasing in that eyesight, to think, to walk, to know for a surety, no doubt that you truly, truly loved us, that we can share that love this day, right now, here, and now, glory to you, Father, this day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's put our hands together and praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord, church. Praise him from whom all blessings flow. We reverence the Lord who has made this day possible. We greet you in the great and wonderful name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Church, I don't know if you know it or not, but it's just good for us to be here. Amen. It is good for us to be here. When Peter, James, and John met Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, and when Jesus exposed himself for who he, who he truly was, they said, it is just good for us to be here. So open up yourselves this morning and see the Lord for who he really is. And you shall say with a certainty, it is good to be here. Amen. We're going to have our welcome by Sister Betty Hines, if she will come now. Let's praise the Lord as she does come. Amen. He is good. Okay, that's much better. Thank you very much. Good morning. Sorry about that. It's a great day, and as the pastor has stated, it's, it, it's so good. You know, everything that happens, um, it happens. It may be sometimes hard for you, but in the end, it's for the good of, of our Father and for us. Uh, I'd like to take this moment to welcome all of our visitors, family, and friends, and thank you for choosing to worship with us this, this morning. We hope and pray that you will hear something that will inspire you, and also so much is revealed through the word, and our pastor is truly prepared to give us that. So sit back and in, try to relax and just enjoy. Thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. We will be a 
observing, not here in this place, but in our own personal uh, group situations, uh, the birth date of our, uh, uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on tomorrow. And with that thought, we ought to have that thought in mind as we're here today. Amen. 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 The Lord used him in a mighty way to help make this, not only this nation, but this entire world a better place to live in. And now let us observe a quiet time of reflection in the sanctuary as we focus our minds and our hearts on God and God alone. Seeing the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. See him. He is truly one God. And he is God all by himself manifesting himself as the Father, manifesting himself as the Son, and manifesting himself as the Holy Spirit, all within his plan, his great plan of salvation for all of humanity. All who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be and is saved and are saved. See him now. See the Lord with your eyes of faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have not a relationship with our Creator. See our wonderful God. Isaiah, in revelation of him, says he was high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Door post shook. Smoke arose, angels appeared, saying one to the other, Holy, 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 the entire earth is filled with God's glory. See the Lord on this wonderful day of worship. For we are all here this morning because we have annoying need to worship him from whom all blessings flow. Can't you see him? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Church, we need to be encouraged in knowing when tough tests and trials overwhelm us that we can and we will make it with Jesus. It is just a part of the human condition that we're all going to be confronted with tests and trials that are beyond our control. And we will find, I'm certain that you have already found, that it is wonderful to know that the Lord is with us. And the greatest thing that you'll ever know is that God is with you. Amen. Dr. King said to have written, if you will protest courageously and yet with dignity and love, when the history books are written in future generations, the historians will have to pause and say, they lived a great people, a black people, who injected new meaning and dignity in the veins of civilization. What a great mind and what a great voice that still has not been silenced 
even today, those words ring true. And I just want to give uh, notice, uh, due notice to the one who, I have a book on the quotes. I have several books on Dr. King, but this was a book Mother Primus may not remember. She gave me this some years ago. I still look through it from time to time and these valuable nuggets that are found in this little book along with the many other books that I have on Dr. King. We thank you for that. Amen. And we thank Dr. King for his life. We thank God for him. Request for prayer has been asked for Brother Lee and Sister Shelley Davis, along with their son, Rodney Wheaton, in the passing of Lee's cousin, Mr. Sebastian Wilder of Maywood, Illinois. And Maywood is a suburb of Chicago. They uh, want you to pray for them in the transition of Lee's cousin. And as you know, there have been several to pass away in his, his family here of late. And uh, just one after another, it seems. So pray for that family. Amen. Amen. And we want you to continue praying for all of our sick, all of our shut-in, and all of our convalescing. Sometimes people ask, well, what's the difference between sick, shut-in, and convalescing? Well, convalescing those, are those people who had surgery and have gone through and are going through this surgery and they are recovering. And we want to remember them because as we are here and feeling somewhat fit as a fiddle, they are still struggling with their recoveries, amen? And there are many people that I know who are recovering yet um, and we some have asked not to be mentioned, uh, but uh, keep them in prayer. God knows exactly who they are. Amen. And, and notwithstanding, let us remember those who do grieve. Grieving is hard. Continue to pray for all those who are, are grieving. Uh, those like Teresita Clinton and the passing of her cousin. We were there at that service. Uh, very dignified service. Uh, it was, uh, I, uh, people were, if I can say it this way, you can understand, well behaved. And uh, they, they remembered her with dignity. And I was just glad to be there and be a part of that. So uh, be it known unto you and your family that you're still being prayed for, as well as all those whose loved ones have transitioned. Amen. Uh, prayer keeps us strong and keeps us marching on. Having said those things, we're going to move on now to a a moment of prayer as we come into this altar prayer where we come before the altar of God as it were in this pastoral prayer praying for all congregants of the Greater Leonard Missionary Baptist Church. We invite all of you to bow your heads now. Close your eyes. For the Lord Jesus says that when you pray, you ought to enter into your closet. And once you're there, close the door, shutting out all distractions that we might focus keenly upon our God. Father, we are here. We stand before you in deep humility, coming as empty pictures before a full fountain. We come before your master as those who are failing, faltering, and frail. We are here we come, O oh Heavenly Father, with thanksgiving brimming over in our hearts, thus spilling out of our mouths, thanking you, Father, for all your many and rich blessings. 
that you have bestowed upon us all. So we are here. We present ourselves before you now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Not upon our own merit do we come, but solely upon his merit. We are here. Thank you, Father for getting us up this morning. Thank you, Father, for starting us, each one of us, on our way. Thank you, Father, for life and the health and strength of life such as you have given us. Thank you, Father, for all the resources for this life, our daily bread. Father, forgive us of our sin. For certainly we have sinned against you. We have sinned against our fellow man. And we're not worthy to be called your sons and daughters your peculiar people because of some of the thoughts that we've had, the words we have spoken, and the behavior that we have displayed. But Father, we know that you are a merciful God. You do hear and answer our prayers. And we know, Father, you are always willing to forgive us of our sin so we are here falling on your mercy today relieve us now of the weight of the guilt of sin that we might freely move about in the kingdom once again father thank you for Jesus whose atoning and sacrificial death of the cross has great weight of redemption for our souls. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for your Holy Spirit who has taken up office here on earth indwelling every true believer, leading and guiding us into all paths of righteousness. And we are thankful. Father, we lift up to you now all the sick and the shut-in and the convalescing. You know them all one by one, name by name. You know them. You even have every strand of hair of their head numbered. You know them to the uttermost. So we lift them up to you right now, Master knowing full well that you know exactly what they need, how they need it, when they need it. Father, bless them. Bless those, O oh Heavenly Father, that experience grief today. Grief has come into their lives into their psyche, into their emotion. And Father, they need your comfort and they need your consolation. So Father, we lift them also to you for you are the God of all comfort. Lord, have your way. Please, Lord, have your way. And as we observe the birth date of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and one of your fallen servants, Father, we pray that we shall remember those things that you moved him to say, words that ring clear and true even now, one who had a dream 
They may have killed the dreamer, but the dream is still alive. And we say hallelujah for the dreamer and his dream. For we know that it is God sent. Oh, Father, bless us to observe that day aright. Going forth throughout that day. Showing a kind of love that certainly cannot be legislated, that can be freely expressed, a love that is unconditional, a love that knows no color, a love that knows no race, a love that's not confined to any one culture, love. Let us have that love today. Some used to say that runs from heart to heart and breast to breast. Let this congregation of people be so close that one certainly cannot fall for the other. Father, bless us. Have us to awaken. and Have us to see, O oh Heavenly Father, what it is you would have us to do and being moved to do it. Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You're so good to us. And if we had a multiplicity of tongues, we could not thank you enough for all of your goodness toward us. Lord God, make your presence known today in the midst of us. Illuminate your word. And as we open ourselves to you, enlighten our minds that we might know what it is that you would have us to know today. That we might go forth from this place serving you in the context of what you have told us. Father, accept our worship today and accept us in worship. As we have entered into this glad time of worship, Lord, we recognize and realize that it is just good for us to be here. Let us learn how to more fully pray for one another, lifting each other up, speaking no ill of each other, but speaking well of each other, not having bad thoughts about each other, but good thoughts. Help us to love one another. Please, Lord, not only in this place, but wherever we go, what the songwriter wrote, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, for it is the only thing that there's just too little love. Help us, Father, Share the love of Christ with all that we encounter. O oh Lord, our Lord, bless the tithe, the offering, and the pledge in those who did attend to it. That this ministry may always be supplied, supported, that we not, might, own, might not only survive as a community of your people, but that we might also thrive, being well enough and strong enough to help lift up fallen humanity. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah to your glorious name. In Jesus' name we pray. 
And for his very sake we say amen, amen, amen. God bless you, church. God strengthen you one and all. And now, let us prepare our hearts for the inspirational song service. And it is our desire that you truly be inspired by these songs of praise that are rendered here in this place today.
just never, I never tire of hearing this young sister sing, and especially sing that song. Amen. As I was sitting there, the Lord spoke to me, and he told me to say to someone, that he's just trying to get you through your season. He wants you to know that you need to let go of that old season and get over to your new season. Bible tells us that there is, for everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, and we're still trying to hold on to what was, instead of moving on to what is. So, he put that on my heart to say, and I have said it. And you need to know that you will make it from your old season to your new season. You will make it over. Even through the storms of hatred, jealousy, envies, racism, social and financial inequality. You need to know you will make it. Father God in heaven, in the precious and wonderful and eternal name of Jesus Christ our Lord, we give you thanks for the inspiration of song. That was, that was designed to glorify you. And subsequent to that, inspire us. Father, as we have come to this portion where your word is to be proclaimed, I pray that you'll take me now and use me as a willing instrument of your holy will, that your will be done. And it is my prayer that the words of my mouth, as well as the meditations of my heart, be found acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, if you would go with me now to the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, St. Mark, verse, or rather chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 35 through verse 41. And I will be reading from the King James Version. And we place emphasis on verse 38. St. Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 41, with emphasis on verse 38. These words are recorded. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was 
in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him. Verse 38, read that along with me aloud. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Thank you for doing that. You may be seated. And the title of this message this morning is simply, Let's Go Over. Let's Go Over. Let's Go Over. Jesus was having a great sense of popularity and fame. He was down by the, he was on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And as he was teaching, the Bible tells us that a great crowd gathered. So much the soul that Jesus got into the ship and he continued to, to teach from that position. Amen, somebody. If we would have that kind of success and that kind of fame, We, want, we, want, we would not want to go anywhere else. But we find by way of this text that Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Much success on that side. But he needed to go over to the other side. Church there, you need to know that we need to go over to the other side. Let's go over. Although it's not a part of our sermon text, if you continue to read, you'll find that when Jesus went over to the other side, he went over to a place called Gadara, to the city of the Gadarenes. And soon as he did light upon the shore, a man who was driven by a number of demons met him. I tell you, Jesus needed to go over to the other side. The Lord Jesus, 
as we have already in a prefatory way said, with his 12 disciples at hand. It's good to be with Jesus. He was engaged in teaching. He was teaching at the shore. It's good to have a church house, but the gospel needs to go everywhere. Jesus was on the seashore, the sea, the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And as we have already said, a great crowd gathered. Amen, somebody. I would be just tickled pink if a crowd showed up here. Amen, somebody. So much the so that I'd have to back up some and keep on preaching. A great crowd had gathered, forcing the Lord to get into a ship from which he continued to teach. He taught, and he taught at length in time and content. The Lord taught the gathered crowd until that evening. If I would preach that long, I would lose not some of you all, but all of you all. But the more he talked, the greater the crowd became. And he continued to teach because they were hungry for the word of God. In the old book, a question went up one day, is there a word from the Lord? Amen. Have you ever been so hungry for the word of the Lord? You ask the question, is there a word from the Lord? They stayed there with him until the evening came. He taught them from many parables parables about the kingdom of heaven. Now exhausted, both physically and mentally, the Lord commanded they go over to the other side. The Bible tells us so they took him. They took him as he was. Perhaps a bit sweaty from teaching all that time. They took him as he was, no change of clothing. They took him as he was, no blanket to cover him as they went across this sea in this chilly evening or night air, they took him as he was. It's a wonderful thing to take Jesus just as he is. Hallelujah, somebody. He's good all by himself. Am I right about it? Exhausted. Physically and mentally. And he commanded that they go over to the other side. And these disciples, these 12 disciples, were obedient. And they launched and headed across the Sea of Galilee to the other side. Is anybody listening? And as I was studying this text, it, I thought about those 12 men. And one of the things that crossed my mind was that Judas Iscariot was with them. Cutting across the field just briefly now. Not only did those 11 with Jesus make it over there, so did Judas. Judas also went over. To the other side. 
Hmm. A life-threatening storm arose. The rain and the sea began to fill up the ship. Isn't that something? The disciples were frantic and fully frightened, forcing them to awake the fully asleep and undaunted and undisturbed Lord Jesus Christ. All of that storm, the ship being tossed and driven, uncontrollable to those seaworthy men. And yet Jesus was asleep. Amen, somebody. Sometimes we have trouble in our lives. And the trouble is out of our control. The one thing I have found out, church, is this. Is what troubles us don't trouble Jesus. What troubles Jesus is the fact that we are troubled. Sea didn't bother him. The rain didn't bother him. The text tells us that he was laying at the hinder part of the ship on a pillar, sleep. Rain coming in, the sea coming in, wind blowing hard, hurricane proportion wind. Isn't that something? Sleep in the storm. And what was outside came inside. And what came inside that was outside now went inside the disciples. They became frantic, panicky. As long as they thought they could handle the storm, they didn't bother Jesus. But what you need to know about the text is that the boat, the ship began to sink. Sometimes your ship is on the verge of sinking. Hallelujah, somebody. You wonder, where is Jesus? Hallelujah, somebody. Jesus is still in the ship. Am I right? Just because you got storms running in your life doesn't mean that Jesus is not there. Jesus is still there. Hallelujah, somebody. Lord, why do I have to go through that? Sometimes storms will come into your life just to try and build your faith. It wasn't like Jesus didn't know it was storming. It just didn't bother him. My faithful fellow followers of Christ, I submit and suggest to you today that we will make it with Jesus. We will. As the people of God here at Greater Linden Missionary Baptist Church, we will make it with Jesus. Can't make it on our own sagacity and fortitude. We will make it with the Lord Jesus. Jesus is still in the ship. Hallelujah, somebody. Put your hands together and praise the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you, some of you are 
trying to make it to the other side of this emotional and physically pestering and pounding pandemic. You're trying to make it on the other side of an Adeline addiction. Trying to make it on the other side of sidetracking surgery. Trying to make it on the other side of a muddled marriage. Trying to make it on the other side of homelessness, joblessness, and disabling disorders, and in general, the various storms of life. And I'm here to tell somebody that we will make it. We'll make it with Jesus. The Lord Jesus is yet saying to us today, let's go over. It wasn't like Jesus didn't know the storm was coming. That Doppler radar lets us know that something is coming all the time, but Jesus who rides on every storm, that Jesus who was able to speak and the storm ceased, that Jesus knew the storm was coming. But he says, let us go over to the other side. Isn't that all right? Hallelujah. Jesus is always telling us things that's frightening to us. But it's just to build and strengthen our faith. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Getting to where you're going over to through physical or spiritual storms. Jesus must be in control. As long as you want to be in control, you're not going to make it. Hallelujah, somebody. But as long as you let Jesus have the wheel, everything will be all right. Is anybody listening to me? Sister Misty, as long as you let Jesus have the control, Everything will be all right while carrying out Christ's command to go over to the other side. The disciples, along with Jesus, encountered a storm. He never promised us that we would live a storm-free life, but he did promise that he would, and he is with us. Am I right? And we will make it with Jesus. And this storm, this storm, the storm that this ship was going through, that storm that those disciples were trying to get through was of hurricane proportions. It wasn't a light storm. It wasn't drizzling outside. The sea wasn't just gently moving. It was violent. The wind was strong enough to tear things apart. And what was outside the ship was now inside the ship and threatening to sink the ship. Church, we must awake to the fact as we go about doing the commands of Christ, we will clash with things too great for us. It's not that Jesus doesn't know that we're going to be confronted, that we're going to encounter things that we cannot handle. In fact, he knows we won't be able to handle it. And yet, he sends us on assignment anyway. Am I right about it? And some of us are just faithful enough, not foolish enough, but faithful enough to follow him and do just what he said. Not only before you get in the storm, but even while you're in the storm. Am I right? But we will make it. We'll make it with Jesus. Jesus, church, you need to know, is always.
always involved in what he commands us to do. He is never absent. He is with us. I remember my dad when we were growing up at home and there was a project he wanted us boys to do down in the basement. And he told us what to do and how to do it. But my dad was right there with us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He was daddy. Daddy didn't have to roll up his sleeves and come down there and help us. He had already told us what to do. But daddy was with us. Daddy being with us encouraged us. When Jesus is with us, it lets us know that we're not alone. It lets us know that everything will be all right. This same Jesus that fed thousands with little. This same Jesus that opened blinded eyes. The same Jesus that unstopped ears. The same Jesus that loosed tongues and made men speak. That same Jesus that raised the dead, healed the sick. That Jesus was still in the ship. And he's still in your life. Hallelujah, somebody. You are not alone. Jesus, Jesus, where was Jesus? Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship. We may have one or two old Navy men here. And they know that hinder doesn't mean down below. The hinder part of the ship is the stern, the back part of the ship. Are you listening to me? Only those old sea dogs know what's at the stern of the ship. And that's where Jesus was. He was in the hinder part of the ship. He was at the stern of the ship. He was in the position and place of the ship where the person who guided the ship would be. He was in the pilot's position. He's the one that was the governor, if you will, of the ship. He made the ship go where the ship was to go. And he was laying on the pillow that the pilot would normally sit on. Jesus I tell you, he was in the ship. He was where the control was. Am I right about it? Hallelujah, somebody. He represented the control of all that was happening to them. Jesus, he represents the control of everything that is happening in your life today. It might be out of your control, but it's not out of his control. Jesus is yet in control because he has absolute control in his hands. And yet put it all in his hands. As Jesus is with us, he's always in. He's always in the position of control. If Jesus is in our lives, he's in our hearts. Hallelujah, somebody. In that position of control. But here's the thing, church. We must give the control over to him. He's in the position. Now let him control it. Jesus doesn't barge in on us. 
You got to invite him in. Give him control of your life. And see how much better your life will go. May not be what you want, but it'll certainly be what you need. Hallelujah, somebody. We must give the control over to him in order to get through the storm. Hallelujah, somebody. Jesus, Jesus, see Jesus asleep during that ferocious storm, that frightening storm. Just a little while ago, there was a terrible storm down south, and it tore up Selma, Alabama. I can't imagine being in a situation like that. Everything about your normal life is turned upside down. But I want to tell somebody today, no matter what it looks like in some Jesus, there's some people that know him down, that Jesus is still in control. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus was asleep. And even though the storm and the sea poured into the ship, Jesus was asleep. Oftentimes our Savior is silent in our obedience to his commands and during our storm. But he is also, but he is so rather that our faith might be strengthened as we give control to him during the times of super strong storms, tests and trials. Tests and trials that move from being in your face to forcing their force into your inner space. It's one thing for that storm to still be here. But what happens when the storm gets inside of you? That same frightening, that same ferocious, that same terrible storm got inside those disciples. They panicked and they became frantic. The boat was, the ship was sinking. That fierce and ferocious storm moved from on the sea to into the ship. From into the ship to into the once safe and secure state of being within those on assignment disciples. Forcing them, forcing them to the point of alarm, forcing them to the point of looking around for some security and safety, forcing them to open their mouths and say to the Lord, that sleeping, silent Savior of ours, Master, carest thou not that we perish? That cry, that cry out of panic and fear that those disciples gave, gave control to the silent sleeping Savior who with control silenced the wind and calmed the sea. Jesus woke up, got up, and spoke up and said, peace, be still. Isn't that all right? Don't sound like much with me saying it. But wait until a storm comes in your life. And you holler, Lord, carest thou not that I perish. And see what Jesus will do. Jesus will get up, he wake up, get up, and he'll speak up in your life. 
and the song that was outside that came inside will come. Hallelujah, somebody. He controlled it. He silenced the wind and he calmed the sea. Nobody could do that but the Lord. Nobody else can do that. Hallelujah, somebody. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but the Lord can say to the wind, you need to be quiet now and say to the sea, you need to lay down and tend to yourself. Nobody but my Jesus, nobody but the Lord. Jesus got up and he spoke up because they had to get over to the other side. Am I right? Jesus knows that you just got to get over what has gotten over you. Am I right about it? So when you get up and you say to Jesus, wake up Jesus, don't you care if I perish? Jesus said, I'm glad you asked that question. And he'll get up and put down at everything that's trying to put you down. That's what Jesus will do. And when he does that, you'll make it over to the other side. Sin is the great storm that prevents mankind from getting over to God. Am I right? Sin will separate you from Almighty God. We need something to bring us back into reconciliation with our God. We need somebody to help reestablish a relationship with Almighty God. Greater than it, I tell you, when you realize and recognize that Jesus is still in the ship, you'll start to genuinely call on his holy name. And Jesus will wake up. Jesus will get up. And Jesus will speak up in this congregation. We need to learn how to wake up Jesus. But Jesus, he came and died for our sins. His lifeless body was laid down in a borrowed tomb. That same Jesus who died on Calvary's cross, he got up on that third day morning, just like he said. He said, though you destroy this temple, he says in three days, I'll raise it up again. On that third day morning, my Jesus, your Lord and my Lord, got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. He did it all that we might all, through faith in him, get over to God, our creator on the other side. Just because storms have come in your life, remember that Jesus is still in the ship. Amen. 
Let's go over, church. Let's go over. Let's go over. We will make it with Jesus. And he has to be in control. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. There may be someone that knows not the Lord in the pardon of his or her sin. This is an opportunity for you to come and publicly profess a faith in him. Come without money, the Bible tells us. Come without price. Come just as you are and take Jesus just as he, he is. Come. Come today, come without delay, he says. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your soul. He wants you to come. Come believing in your heart, your innermost being. And subsequent to that, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe unto righteousness, and it is with your mouth that confession is made unto salvation. You say, well, where, pastor, why do I have to come up front publicly? Can I do this in your study? Can I do this in one of the classrooms? Can I do it off to the side? No, you can't. Because Jesus didn't die in a corner. He didn't die in one of the priest's studies. He died right there on a, on a hill that was parallel, parallel to a public road. And all that passed would see him stripped naked of all of his clothing, beaten to a bloody pulp, hanging there for all the world to see. He died publicly for us. You can come publicly for him. That the world may know that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that he is a reality for you. For something has moved you. Something has touched you. Something has caused you to open your mouth and say, I believe. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. And this is the only way that I can come to the Father is through him. Come to him now. He's the only way. He's the only way. Why don't you come? Why don't you? Why don't you come? Come to him. Come to him. so that you can make it through the various storms of life. With your God-giving plan and purpose intact. Living a meaningful and fulfilled life in Jesus Christ. If you have been struggling as to what to do with your life, Struggling with emotional instability. Struggling with addictions of all types. Struggling in a bad marriage. Struggling under the weight of wayward children. Struggling with sin. Sin that keeps us blinded to the righteousness of God. Father in heaven, great God of ours, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we come again 
And Father, we pray your blessings upon these who have heard your word. That their word will take root in their hearts, their lives, and bring forth fruit. Father, I pray for that one or those who are in the valley of decision. For now Jesus is on their hands in the decision they must make. They must respond to the gospel. And Father, I pray you go alongside of them and help them as they open themselves up to you. That you will go in and they can then fellowship with you and you can fellowship with them. Father, bless them. And Father, we thank you for your word that we find always to be both lamp and light. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake we say, Amen. And for those of you who are viewing, if you want to make that initial step to Christ, you can call us at area code 314-421-5288. 421 5288 Leave your name, your number, and a brief message, and someone will get right back to you and help you make that initial step unto the Lord. And now as we prepare to leave this place but never his presence, we do so in this fashion. the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rests, rule, and abide with all of us henceforth now and forevermore. Let every believing soul say one more time. Amen. Amen. God bless your church and go in peace and have a safe celebration of Dr. King's day on tomorrow. God bless you.